Legal education for many years has been an almost purely academic exercise, and that, that is changing now, and I think it's a long overdue change. Currently, in the early part of the 21st century, there's more and more attention being paid to experiential education as a cornerstone of legal education. I'm delighted to be at California Western and working with people who feel the same way. Students in the past year have already donated over a thousand hours of their time to doing this type of pro bono work here at the Downtown Community Law Project. Downtown we're able to work with a lot of homeless clients, a lot of low-income clients, as well as working class and middle-income clients. Often we see clients with immigration issues or bankruptcy issues and family law issues. Perhaps at one point they would have been able to afford an attorney um, or wouldn't have been going through a family law situation or a bankruptcy situation years ago. But at this point in our economy, those clients are here, they need legal assistance, and they can't afford to pay for an attorney, so they're coming to us. As a social worker, my goal is to connect people into systems or to connect people into places where they can get their needs met. When it comes to law services, there are not a lot of good options. If we're working with someone who not only has medical needs and is here to see our medical clinic, but is also struggling in a difficult marriage or um, is now estranged, um, is maybe a victim of domestic violence, we're very blessed to have the Community Law Project here. They're able to talk through with an individual what rights they have what options for care they have. The example that's popping to mind is I saw a woman who um, unfortunately has breast cancer and um, was really starting to get to the point where she was going to have to make some serious decisions about um, health care decisions, durable, power of attorney, advanced directives and you know she she really has trouble establishing trust and I think she really trusts the clinic here and so when I was able to offer her services, legal services, to help make a will and establish advanced directives, I could see that visibly she was comfortable and relaxed about that referral because she knew it was within this, within this project, within this system. And so the referral that I made was for her to come talk to the legal clinic about um, establishing a will and advanced care directives because again she has advanced, advanced breast cancer. I needed um, to be incognito as far as where I lived, and they gave me quite a bit of advice on that, so I went and pursued that and did all the changes I had to do legally to get a name change and go to the courts and talk with the judge. It took me a few months, and I couldn't afford an attorney, so I came here. And they said they had a law clinic here, so I went and asked them about how to file for divorce. and. What, and a few other legal questions, and they were able to help me out. I got the divorce, I got uh, my name expunged, uh, and I gotta, now I'm gonna ask them again if I can upgrade it. You know, the, the types of cases that come through here uh, pretty much run the gamut. Uh, for example, uh, I've been able to, you know, at least provide some information to people that uh, would qualify for uh, what's called the Deferred Action Program, which was a, a program that President Obama recently passed. So far, I've had the opportunity to shadow a divorce attorney, and that was interesting to, over, to oversee some of those cases. And next week, I will be working with a bankruptcy attorney. We've read some interesting law articles on confidentiality, cross-cultural client counseling, and I've taken, been able to take so much of what I've learned in this one unit course as well as the outside internship and really apply it to other courses. So once a week I am able to meet with the students for an hour and review incidences that happened at the clinic, talk about particularly challenging situations that may have occurred and also really get into the nuts and bolts of how to really interview a client who might be in a crisis situation. And as a result of participating in the classroom component, students get all the benefit of classroom instruction then they come here and have on-site experiential instruction and then they go back to the classroom to process what has happened here and what they've learned while they're in the process of delivering services. And those things all taken together really round out this educational experience. It's the students who give so much of their time and their energy. I find that so inspiring and that's part of the reason I'm here as well.
they say it takes a village, and this is part of that village. As students participate in this kind of work, they take the values that they've learned here into their practices and make the world a better place.